Morning team. Morning. Good day, team. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Whoa. So we're off to Brat now. Been hanging out at the spot for a couple of days. It's been nice, but it's time to move on, I think. As we start heading more north now. Fortunately, that means it's going to get colder. Yeah, I know. So this place has been good to us, um, but you can definitely tell every time we hop into the water, it's getting a little bit colder. Um, how long is the drive today? Two hours. Two hour drive. And then we're going to have a look around this afternoon and then tomorrow as well around Barat City. Then off to Tirana. It was a sleepy start as we left our wild spot, so we took it slow on those gravel roads and appreciated the quiet morning. So as people sit onto their weekend hobbies, we set off. Old terrain vehicle. Yep. Yeah. Nelly yeah. Wilder. Nelly Wilder. My friends is an Albanian motorway. Not bad. Not bad. I think this is actually the first like proper motorway that we've been on yeah. since we've been here. It's like the same size as New Zealand motorways, except for the lines have been a lot more bright. And there will probably be no studies on it. But anyway, pretty buzzy. Everyone drives Mercedes here as well, or Audi. As we drove deeper into Albania and away from the coastline, we drove through some Saturday markets where people were selling anything from clothes to spare parts to gas bottles, but we keep driving through. So we've just arrived, um, and we're pretty much just in a car park, um, but it has power, um, free Wi-Fi, bathroom, and it's close to town, and this castle we're going to go check out. Seems alright. Originally we were going to spend two nights here, but I think we're thinking just one. It is a bit busy, and we'd rather spend money maybe somewhere a little bit more scenic than a car park. So um, I think we're just going to keep looking and mosey up to the castle. With the sun now high in the sky, we decided to head out and see a little bit more of Barat City. Our first destination was to visit the castle. These are the old buildings. Barat City, also known as the White City, due to the many Ottoman houses, has over the ages been invaded and controlled, first by the ancient Greeks, the Byzantine Empire, the Roman Empire, the Slavs, Bulgarians and the Ottoman Empire which all have had a cultural influence on it. According to folklore, the overlooking Mount Tomor was an ancient giant who battled another giant, another nearby mountain, all over a woman. The two giants slayed each other in the battle and the woman drowned in her own tears of sorrow, which created the Ozum River. Eventually we found a path leading up to the castle, a very steep walk on a very hot day. Oh, <laughs> I tried to do it more of a blending in fashion, aka not wearing shorts, actually wearing jeans. And under this layer that we're not actually wearing, we are sweating. <laughs> it is so warm, and we've left the beach. <sighs> this castle looks pretty cool. Barat Castle, also referred to as the Citadel of Barat and Castle Quarter, is a fortress overlooking the town of Barat. It dates mainly from the 13th century and contains many Byzantine churches in the area and Ottoman mosques. Constantini first. I mean, if those eyes haven't seen stuff, I don't know what is. 
Those are fucking bad. <laughs> it is built on a rocky hill on the left bank of the River Osen, and it sits at an impressive elevation of 214 metres. Over time, this fortress has seen itself attacked, rebuilt, and refortified. In its present state, even though considerably aged, it is still in a great nick, and there are even a few locals who still live and work within its castle walls. After a decent walk around the castle, we decided to head back to Nelly, chill out, and cool off for the next couple of hours until it was time for dinner. How are you guys? Uh, we're off to dinner. Yeah, just rang up this place. It's called Lily's Homemade Food. Guy sounds pretty nice. Read a few reviews. See these folks, English and German. So we figure what the hell. I'm just trying to ring and see if we can book a table. And I think he understood the accent, right? So it's good. But I've been having a few difficulties uh, articulating a few words that the Albanians can quite understand. Um, whereas I get taken to translate sometimes. Because she comes from Auckland. <laughs> and everyone's like, Dylan, what's her name? And Dylan's like, Bob Dylan. And they're like, ah, Bob Dylan, Dylan. And I like, always yeah. just say Bob. And they're like, Dylan. <laughs> cool. Ready? Bye, guys. Because we had the ability to cook our own food, which had saved us a lot of money over our travels, we didn't often eat out. So it was nice to be able to experience a little more of Albania and taste some new food. It's the menu, guys. What? Oh, the thing was just like, there's no windows now. There's no roof, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, back to, back to this. Basically, what you got here is 600, 250, that's 400. Like that. That's the main thing, and that's the dessert. The menu consisted of a few tiers of different traditional Albanian food, and it was cooked right next door in his own kitchen by his wife. Ili, the restaurant owner, could not do enough for his guests and spoke at least five different languages to make everyone feel at home. It was a great night trying new food and meeting new people. Well, I look good. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I had the first one. Nice! The first one! 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 The first Morning guys, um, so the last couple of days we've been in Tirana, but today we're going to go to Bunker 1, which is a converted bunker 